Scientists often model stroke, a human disease caused by a blocked blood vessel to the head, in animals to try and develop new treatments that they could give to human to have a stroke. And there's large numbers of compounds that have been tested in animals that have appear to improve the stroke outcome in animals, but when they've been taken forward into human clinical trials, they simply don't work. And so we've been trying to identify the reasons for that. And generally speaking, there seem to be two broad categories of, the re of reason. The first is that the animal studies didn't actually explain what happened in those animals, that the findings of the research were confounded. They were wrong because the studies were at risk of bias. And one of the other reasons that we think that stroke drugs might not make that transition from treating animal strokes to treating human strokes uh, is because the animals that we use are generally young and they're generally healthy. And the patients that I see with stroke are generally neither young or healthy, but they have problems like hypertension or diabetes. And a very small proportion of stroke studies actually in animals actually use animals which have those characteristics. And so for one drug that I can think of in particular, only 7% of the animal studies used animals with high blood pressure, in the clinical trial, a clinical trial which showed the drug didn't work, 77% of the patients in the study had high blood pressure. So perhaps if 77% of the animals had high blood pressure, we'd have got a more transferable result. We wouldn't have done the clinical trial, we'd have saved a lot of money, and we wouldn't have put patients at risk during that clinical trial. But we simply don't understand enough about the scientific process and the process of translating findings from animals and humans to have a roadmap that we can follow to say, do this, do this, do this, we'll get an answer quickly and efficiently. So we need to have more research activity in this area to try and work out better how we can predict treatments that will, will work and treatments that won't. One of the things that seems sometimes ha to happen with research is that scientists embark on a program of study and they don't quite know what they're looking for or the direction they're going to take and then halfway through they change and they'll maybe ask a slightly different question or they'll measure a slightly different outcome and then when it comes to the statistical analysis of their findings uh, they'll perhaps use one test and if that doesn't show them quite what they'd like to see sufficient to get the work published they'll perhaps use another test and then another test and all of these things which interfere with the scientific process after the initiation of the study can lead to bias can lead to reporting things which turn out not to be true so one of the ways around this is to insist that an experimental plan is set up at the beginning of an experiment it's not changed unless there is a good reason to change and if it is changed that that reason and the timing of that change is apparent to people. No one goes into science wanting to do bad research. Nobody goes into the lab in a morning thinking I'm going to take some shortcuts today but it doesn't matter. What we've got to do is give scientists the tools to be reflective in the way they do the work, to consider the sources of bias that others have thought about in other fields but also sources of bias that might be particular to their fields to take them into account and try and minimise the impact that that has on the validity of the work that they did.